In this video, we discuss why 25% of Americans plan to delay retirement. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! You'll notice a slightly different background on this video compared to most. Normally I have a whiteboard behind me, or a digital whiteboard anyway, but this week we are filming from Long Beach Island, New Jersey. LBI is an 18 mile barrier island just north of Atlantic City. And so you'll notice in these videos, I'll be wearing less formal gear. I'll be wearing an exercise, digital exercise band and golf shirts for most of them. But rest assured that the content will be delivered in the same way as before. We'll use presentation material instead of a white electronic board this time. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about why one in four Americans are delaying retirement. Recently, the Bank of Montreal or BMO, as most people call it, released what they call the Real Financial Progress Index. The report came out at the end of May, so it's quite current, and it discusses the state of mind of many different age groups. It is telling the state of mind of the different age groups, but one thing is for certain, all of them agreed that things are not great right now. If you want to see the press release that discusses the data, I'll put a link in the description, and as always, I'll remind you at the end so that you don't have to stop the video. Let's get into some of the key data, and then we'll drill down into why people are postponing retirement. First off, 42% of the respondents said that when they buy groceries now, they're buying less expensive items, they're avoiding brand names, and some of them are only buying essentials. 46% of the respondents said that they are dining out less, and those that are dining out are consciously spending less when they go out. 31% are driving less to offset the soaring cost of fuel. 23% said that they're spending less on vacations or canceling vacations altogether. By the way, anecdotally, here in LBI, I did notice that it is easier to get into restaurants, stores are a little less crowded, and at least one restaurant, which doesn't take reservations but has a great breakfast offering, usually has a line around the corner, and now you can get in at any time of day. Finally, 22% of the respondents said that they are taking cost-saving measures like canceling their gym subscription or magazine subscriptions. Not a bad idea if you're not using them anyway, but that's the subject of another video. And one out of four people approaching retirement are postponing retirement. Here's some data that will explain this. First, and we all know it, inflation is running at over 8%. This means that the retiree or the future retiree's buying power is down by 1 12th. That's in the last 12 months alone. Now, 1 12th may not seem like a big number until you realize that most retirees live on a fixed income. If you raise their cost base by 1 12th, this means that something else has to give. They don't have a lot of wiggle room. At least many of them don't have a lot of wiggle room. Add to that the fact that the basket that is used to calculate inflation, the basket of goods and services, isn't known to most people outside of perhaps economists and people like me who spend a lot of time doing the research. So that all that a future retiree would see is the price of gasoline. And this is a very real and concrete number and the change is easily calculable. Not to mention that they are reminded of it when they turn on the television or speak to friends almost every day. Last year at this time, the average cost of gasoline was $3.15 a gallon. Today, it's $5.03 a gallon. It doesn't take a lot of work to determine that gasoline has gone up by 60% in the last 12 months. Then they see that their food bill is up between 10 and 12%, closer to 12% if they are buying groceries, a little less than 10% if they're eating out, and all of a sudden that 8% number doesn't look real to them. It's an easy mistake because people don't think about their mortgage payment or their rent payment when they think about inflation. They think about the things that change. They don't think about the things that stay the same. If the rent did go up 60%, most people could not afford to live in their current home. But it's important to note that the BMO survey reports how people feel, not what is actually happening, because what people feel is what drives their behavior. So on the one hand, you have inflation. On the other hand, you have the decline in investments. The near-term target mutual funds, meaning funds that have a target date close to when an individual is going to retire and that retirement date is in the near future, are down on average between 15 and 16%. These target fund mutual funds rebalance their portfolio from a larger equity component to a smaller equity component over time. And as someone reaches the age where they are going to retire, it should be about a 50-50 balance, with roughly 50% in equity and another 50% in short and long-term bond products. Many times bonds increase in value when the equity market is going down. 
Unfortunately, that wasn't the case this time because inflation is also part of the equation. A third component to the postponement of retirement is the employer factor. Right now, employers can't keep staff, and because they can't keep staff or staff have just decided to stop working, the demands on those going into retirement are higher. They're often asked to stay and work longer because the business needs them. The cycle of replacing more mature workers looking for a retirement with mid-level workers looking to move up and entry-level workers looking to move into mid-level has come to a halt in many cases at some companies. And in my personal opinion, the family of those approaching retirement are also facing these same conditions. And so the patriarch or the matriarch of the family continues to work in case they're needed to help out. And frankly, the head of the family would feel more comfortable helping out financially if they were still working. I believe this last element is a much larger component than people give it credit for, but I haven't tested it with a survey like I normally do, but I have seen it many times in the comment section and also with conversations with people who are approaching retirement. Of course, there are other reasons as well. If you're postponing retirement and these aren't your reasons, put them in the comment section so that we can all see them and learn from them. Also, if you've decided to continue into retirement despite the information that we just talked about, let us know why in the comment section as well. Also, as a reminder, the link to the BMO Financial Progress Index is in the description below. And check out this video on the average 401k balance in June of 2022, the balance of a 60-year-old. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.